broken, a dream of not being understood by my parents, a dream of rebelling against my society, a dream of wanting to help the world. But it was a dream nonetheless. And then I dreamt that I went to India. And I walked into a room much like this. And I looked at a man sitting in front of the room. And in that moment, beyond a shadow of my a doubt, I knew that everything up until that moment was a dream. I had had glimpses of it in deep meditation or on certain substances. But it wasn't until I saw Papaji that I knew. Such a beautiful silent crowd. No testimonials even needed, huh? Beautiful. Well, is there anybody in the room who doesn't get it? <laughs> really, be honest. Is there someone in this room who has not a clue of what we're speaking of or doesn't believe it? Still wanting to hold on to a point of view or thinks that I have a point of view and you don't agree with it because I promise you I have no point of view about any of this. You, you know what worries me is it's not only that I don't completely get it, mm. but there's a part of me that doesn't want to get it. Yes, love. You know? This is beautiful to get. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, th there's, a, there's a part of me that's like <clears throat> threatened. Yes, you know, of course. By some of this. Yes, of course. It's like you're sleeping and I'm saying, hey, bro, wake up. Wait, ah, get the hell away. Yeah. Wake up, wake up. Ah! Have you, have, didn't you, haven't you ever tried to wake some up? They're ready to kill you? <laughs> I'm dreaming. <laughs> Actually, they do kill you sometimes. Look at Jesus. Yeah, so like I'm just now to the point where I've figured out how to live in my dream yes. comfortably. Yes. And now I have to wake up. <laughs> now what? Well, you know, we're not talking about comfortable. That's the thing, you know. See, what you've taken as comfortable doesn't even compare to what it is to be awake in the dream. It's just, it's a whole different ball game. It's the difference between, you know, sitting on the bleachers or being on the pitcher's mound. You know, you'll settle for it because it's as close as you can get to it. But in your heart of hearts, you really want to be playing the game. You really want to be part of the whole. But you're willing to kind of settle for what's available. Bleacher seats. That's what you call comfortable. What I'm speaking of is not comfortable, but is so blissful. It's like the happiest day you've ever had so far, exponentially. That's all I can say is, it's, it's like having millions and millions of dollars without the responsibility. It's like being in love without the other to drag you down. <laughs> It's like being everywhere at the same time. I mean, these are just pointers, but unfortunately, most people need a kind of wake-up call like my beloved here has to shake them out of the dream because just as the comfort was not there at one time and is now, it will not be there again. 
Some circumstance will change or your point of view will change and what is seen as comfortable now will not be comfortable in the next mm -hmm. moment. And this is the source of our suffering. The misidentification and the attachment to that which is impermanent. So, I mean, do you live there? Yes, I live here. Yeah. I live here, yes. Do you feel yourself slide out of it sometimes? Mm. And there's no one to slide out, there's no one to slide in. Here is always, here is so big, there's no in and out of it. Yeah. You understand? It's all here. It means whatever happens is part of here. There's no it for me. There's no it to slide in and out of. Whatever it, this is, is it. And that's it? That's it. <laughs> you understand? So, let go of what you think it is, what you think brings you comfort, who you think you are, let go of this it. Just release this it. You tell this it to keep quiet. See, this is the only teaching of my master, keep quiet. So you say, keep quiet it. Shh, it. <laughs> and then you see what you once thought was it is nothing but a bunch of shit. <laughs> it's true. The idea of being comfortable, you see. You, you become uncomfortable with the idea of being comfortable. You see how limiting it is, this need to be comfortable. How it boxes you in. And how you feel f good, but that good then suddenly becomes the criteria in which you base the next moment. And if the next moment doesn't meet that criteria, then you don't feel good. Now you're a prisoner of your concept of what is comfortable, what is good. And you're already lost it. So what I'm speaking of is not it that can be attained. And it's not an it that can be lost. It's who you are when you're willing to let go of even your comfort. When you're willing to let go of the whole dream. And just be still. And you'll see, it would reveal itself to you. It'll be like, ah, yes. Ah. Yeah, I, I seem to be putting myself in a position in life to where that's happening. Yes, you know? of course. That's I, why you're here. I'm headed like right straight <laughs> towards my fear. Yes, you know? how beautiful. Is this our first meeting? Second. Second, beautiful. Uh, come to satsang as much as you can so you'll have a context from which you can finish yourself. You understand? I'm just your mirror. I'm here to reflect you in your own context of your own awakening, whether it's a diagnosis with a disease, whether it's your lover leaving you, whether it's your business going bankrupt, whether it's feeling uncomfortable in your own skin, whatever it is, it wakes and shakes you from your slumber. Okay? Come to satsang so you have a context for it. So you don't have to doubt or think you're going crazy or losing your mind. And you don't have to fear. You just trust that all is perfect and it's all happening perfectly. And that you're destined to wake up and you all are destined to realize the truth that you're already awake. It's your destiny. You can't escape it any more than you, your body can escape its inevitable death. You can't escape it. Just as thought rises from emptiness and returns to emptiness, you, these bodies, rise from consciousness and return to consciousness. It's inevitable, this realization. So it doesn't even matter, ultimately. But the difference between living in suffering and living in peace, or living in hell and living in heaven, is this shift of consciousness between misidentified body, who has these moments of peace or love or God, to being peace and love and God itself with moments of mind rising in it and falling in it. You understand? I think so. Yes, beautiful. You just sit in satsang and you watch it. It'll happen by itself. All of your concepts fall away. 
all of your ideas disappear if you're humble. If you're arrogant, God help you, because I cannot. And the problem with arrogance is, usually you're too fucking arrogant to notice it. And that's why our world looks the way it does. But if through some grace you find yourself in satsang with the humility to say, I don't know, then the doorway is open to your enlightenment. God bless you. You see how simple it is, my love? Are you ready to give up the struggle? Hmm? I feel like I'm dying. Hmm. This is true. This I, she's dying, let her die. Who you are will never feel like she's dying. Because she's never been born either. And she only exists now. So the past is dying. Hmm? Let it die. Yeah, I have the feeling in my body. Yes. The identity so and the body all dying. Shaking. Yes, let it die. Let it go. Okay? Don't think about it, don't interpret it. Don't make up a story about it. Let it happen. It happens by itself. Okay. Beautiful. This chocolate must die for you to eat it. It's a sacrifice. The raindrop must die when it merges with the ocean. It's a sacrifice. Be willing to sacrifice yourself. <laughs>